So there's 13, 18, 19. I, I would probably tell yeah. you it need at least probably another six, five or six million dollars. Probably, you know, as a, as a number or a placeholder right now. Um, but because I haven't gone down the complete road of scoping in how, you know, the size and, and, and shape. Um, based on what's left there now, which is about 18, 19 million dollars, take five for that and then maybe reduce the others to. to, uh, to no, that's to, not to what you can do. To con they, well, I was going to say to conform they with. They have two centers. They have Grand there's three. There's three left. And Keystone. Right. I can either eliminate one and move and it to that. And move it to, to, to that. Or? Reduce both. Well, if we want to talk honestly about Keystone Center, um, it does need maybe some, mm -hmm. so it needs some thick, it needs fixing. It needs, but it's on such yeah, a small yeah. footprint, unless you're going to build up with parking underneath or something. I don't know what you do there that that makes better use of that land. We, have no, we have no parking there. There's yeah, it's all parking. Margulis, there's no parking. Right. It's, if we move mo that the money over there, so so why don't you do this? Why don't we do this? Let's move the Gwen Margolis money to the I guess the Solar Media site. We need some Gwen Margolis Hold because on. we've got to fix that up big so time. I said, and so and that's something uh, we rent. So well, the developer in their agreement has to put money into Gwen Margolis. They do. Yes, it's in the agreement. See, that's something we should know <laughs> that we right. could be playing with. You know what well, is their obligation? I can't really play with it because well, it is their obligation, and so that's something that we need to bring back. They're willing to discuss it because it's in the it's in the lease agreement. So, so I have to. S maybe we can negotiate that instead of putting the money into Gwen Margolis, they put it into the park there, and then we worry about Gwen Margolis, and they, I mean, we're constantly amending and negotiating. Can't we just switch their obligation to the? I Park would there? I would tell you since we're in control of this right now, mm -hmm. take five million dollars from that Gwenmar Golis number, okay. put it to a center <laughs> in Solomia. Okay. And leave 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 a balance there. Two million dollars. Yeah, two million dollars for you know, there's no parking. Pop. There's that well, much you can do at Gwen Margot. Well, we but just, you can do you can do some some renovation upgrades in yeah. the actual physical building and and allow it to remain in its current utilization. Yes, fumigation. And, yeah. and I think there's probably <laughs> unless you are planning <laughs> unless you are planning for Keystone Tot Lot, some sort of really major thing that we've just not discussed. You can probably shave some of that six yes. million for Keystone. You can, center. but those are scope changes. And remember, oh. me, the deputy, we sat down with these engineers. Hey, what if we did this? Oh, that would cost X amount. Right. This, these weren't these weren't plans. We were just these are just ideas. Oops. Right. So you can scope down anything here. Okay, right. may, I, may I say something? Sure, sure. Okay, so while you're paring down Keystone, which we absolutely need new bathrooms, we need a whole new overhaul, whatever we can do, um, and you're talking percentages, which to me doesn't really work. Um, I'd like to take two million, million and a half out of Keystone, and then you could put that into the infrastructure of our guard gates. And I think the people in Keystone would rather have the guard gates than uh, the money in, you know, I mean, there you've got a little extra money for your guard gates. We'll lower it, but that's where you'll have money for it, because you've, low, you've lowered your infrastructure down to 15. No. I think the people will be uh, more inclined no, to vote for. infrastructure is 36 in total. What? Infrastructure is 36 in total. Okay, well, 20 was for uh, sustainability and 15 was for right. streets. So if you're going to take a million, million and a half out for guard gates, I mean, they have to be in there. I mean, I would like to see them. I think that's what. So why don't we do this? You're down to 120 right now. Leave the number as it is, huh? the total. Move five to from Griffin, excuse me, from Gwen Margolis to a solar meal. We also took a million six seventy off, well, right? Let him finish. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no, step six seventy. Leave the five million for reduce Gwen Margol is down to five million. That's leaving the category the same. Buy five million. No, two five million. Gwen Margol. Let him finish, okay, and then let him, let's see what what, we, what he okay. says. <laughs> two five million. 
You said you wanted to reduce Keystone also, right? I think it could get away with reducing So Keystone. then take $2 million from that number and move it to the infrastructure question for Guard Gates. Gates. For Keystone and San Susi. Right. For oh. Guard Gates. And is bridge restoration in there too with your infrastructure? I have not looked at that physically. Okay. Um, Well, we got to answer that real quick for election day. Yes, we can do oh. that, and and I'm gonna leverage off your idea. We, the surtax does roads, all of our bridges are roads. Right. So looking at the possibility of you using utilizing that as another funding source, and it might just need some reinforcement. I have no idea what the co I condition. I don't either. Of but we have, uh, we have to do a conditional. But so uh, on that side, there is um, something that I see that nobody want to compromise on the parks. If I'm if I understand. I'm we're the only one that compromised we're on, reducing, on Griffin. Right, but we're reducing the other ones. No, I did. I swear, you're not reducing it. Right. Yeah, yours is... Yes. How much do we have right now in the budget between the CIA and General Fund for Griffin Center? For the location? Uh, Where's Russia? Russia is in, she's in the back. Can you come here, Russia, please? Because people Terry. don't, I don't want people Terry to there. have the impression Terry. that. Uh, Terry. And that's maybe where we need to Hold take on. some. That's maybe where you take a break if you need to research some of that stuff to come back. Yeah. And, oh. Yeah. No. Look at that. The total. No, what we what we have right now is the just the design money, the one point five. Okay, we have one point five yeah. for for design for, for for design for Griffin Center. Yeah. Okay. How much do you have here for affordable housing? Ten. You at fifteen? No, it's ten. No, you at one twenty? I'm at one twenty by removing the Griffin, Griffin Center only, reducing the infrastructure to 3-6, which is taking out uh, the transit village. Mm -hmm. um, and you reduce your, you reduce your affordable housing to 10. For the citywide streets improvements, how much do you have now? I still have 20 in that category right now. Can't take that one. No, you got it. Because the city needs streets. Yeah, about 20 million. If we're going to, we just want some type of compromise. I mean, I thought you dropped it you to make 15. It the, can, I, can I interject just right. a little bit? 131st Street was done when Ali Mgani was okay, there. that's fine. Uh, no, 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 no. The, no, the point I want to make is how expensive it is. Okay. Uh, we just uh, okay right. two projects just for three blocks. Okay. It costs six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, can since you have so, one point five for the design, can mm, you remove five million dollars from affordable housing added to Griffin Community Center? Okay, and um, call it a day. Wait, wait, well, yeah, one last. Bring affordable housing down to five million. Mm. Yeah, I know that's that's not that 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 might be different. But you don't want to compromise on anything, you and you said, um, Mr. Mr. Councilman. Uh, let me say this to you, and and please hear me very clearly. The people that are gonna affect it the most. I'm sitting here, wanna work with you guys because I I do know, but sincerely, I know this gonna hurt. So, and I'm not saying much. Because staff has done everything I've asked them to do to come at this point. And, and Mr. Mayor is right. We've been going at this for three years. So there's, there's really nothing in here except $16 million that you're saying out of 120. And these are the people who cannot afford it the most. So houses probably going to start losing over there first before it get anywhere. So please don't, don't talk about you know what we're not asking. Last week, I had three residents who came to me and said, 
I told them that I didn't know the guard gate was in there because they were talking about a, a nice entrance gate. I said, no, don't bring me no entrance gate for, for, for West Side because the, the guard gate not in there. So if we are putting it in there, can we try to find a way how do we s slide that in there where we get some, some gate? Because at the end of the day, everyone has to vote on this, I, if I'm assuming. Is it some district vote? How does it work? It's everybody. So, okay, so in order, for, that's what I'm saying. So when you look at less than 15%, Going um, if you want to do it by district, that's that, that's fine. Cause what you said, less than fifteen. percent It will be less than fifteen percent of the total by. amount. No, if we talk about districts, so the the two little parks that you talking about, Pepper and Sunkiss, that's less than fifteen percent of the total what amount. What are you talking about? You have twenty million dollars for street. No, for but street. that's I'm pretty that, much your five million dollars going to go to your district. No, it's not. No, it's well, we don't have the well, we don't have the exact numbers yet. If if we had it's that, twenty I would've, million dollars. If it's twenty, are you saying, Mr. Manager? Out of that twenty, um, we we getting. Are you ready spend to? Five million on street improvement and. He's not it's under, based that's on it's like, citywide. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. able to follow this because everybody's talking all over each other. So yes. Like, so, to 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 my point, I, I'm okay with where we are right now with okay. with the 120, and I wasn't so there. You're okay with where we are, except the with the. Okay. Well, he's, I don't know if he's okay. He is, That's he what is. I just okay. said. I just, I just moved something from affordable yeah. to griefing. We still at 120. That, that, that's okay, that's I'm fine. the only per person. That's the only I'm the only one with Bless your heart. compromise here. Bless your heart. No, we all compromise. You didn't do anything. Where? What do you want me to do? Where There's nothing for me. compromise nothing. Councilman, you came up with the affordable housing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Most of that is but because you don't want to compromise on all your parks. There's nothing to compromise. I have two two little parks. That's what I'm saying. What am I? You have ten, uh, uh, ten million dollars for Clear Pepper. Park. We have we have we have Councilman Galvin who wants to. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Councilman. Be hurt, because so. I, if we talk about the guard gate, j just to say we got to do the um something with the Mr. Mr. Ma manager with mm. the entrance gate, and I'm good. Okay, so whatever that we do, if we. The, the the residents, the two residents that came up to me, they were talking about having some nice um, entrance gate from the west side. So I don't mind doing that. And I don't mind, because you got to understand these folks out of the folks. So I had told them, no, if we're doing that, let's just do that, and we're good. The way yes, you want right. to do it? Where? On, the, on the entrance of where, um, St. Kiss Grove oh, and okay. in the other areas. Mm -hmm. That's nice. You know, I don't know how much that would be, but I told them no, because I said there's no guard gate in this. But it, I don't mind the guard gate. I, I, I fully support it, but I'm just saying as a compromise, let's go ahead and add if that. If we keep it to okay. 120, can you give them some numbers to the residents, how much is going to be instead of... Yeah, yeah, he's going to. Yeah. yeah. No, you won't be able to do it now? <laughs> can I he will, he will, he will. Eh? Yeah, but, but yeah, but Larry. Mr. Galvin wants yeah, to be heard. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I, I feel this is back in the days when this was Joe Celestin <laughs> and Maurice Sterrell up here, and I couldn't get a word in. Um, <laughs> um, the, I want to come back to affordable housing, please. Are we saying now that you only want to have five million in the affordable housing? Because category? we try to lower the bond to about between one hundred and one twenty. Right, and I get that, but I will prefer to have twenty million dollars for that. But I compromise right. on Griffin Center, right. and nobody want to compromise on the park. Well, look, and, and I agree there might be other places we can compromise. But honestly, okay. affordable housing at five million sounds like we're not doing very much. Where you think we can compromise? Yeah. Well, since Alex out of the room, let's cut. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 but um, you know, again, we gave on our community centers to help go toward a guard gate. Maybe he'd give for something, or there's something else. I don't know. We can. We still have time to be here tonight. I was not planning. She had 10 o'clock in the over-under. I had 11 o'clock. <laughs> um, but affordable housing, we have to be yeah. able to do something real. We can't just talk about affordable housing because that's not helping people in this community. And, and I mean this community in South Florida who need a place, teachers who need to afford, you know, if, if you look at the rental, the numbers for rental in Dade County, we're now on par with New York and Los Angeles, and a single working person can't afford to live by themselves. So we, we have to look at doing something substantive. I agree we can do things for a lot cheaper. Um, I had some friends with Los, from Los Angeles meet with the city administration this week to talk about some creative things they're doing out in L.A., um, but... Five million just seems like a big drop from twenty. About ten, I was okay with. You know, seven point five, I don't know. But <coughs> Larry, uh, how much you have for infrastructure for, not for infrastructure for city, wide streets, and improvements? What if we eliminated the tech, and moved that into affordable housing? That's what it likes. 
Well, I get it. That's what everybody likes, and nobody likes affordable housing. But I'm not. <laughs> I'm not here to just do what everybody likes because it's popular. There is there is a greater need in this community for people to afford a home than there is for them to get free Wi-Fi. What about the two million? You said drainage improvement. You cannot. Uh, all right, can, what can about just, the twenty city wide? Just just because it's been it's been said twice now, I just need to jump in and say something. Um, we are in second reading of this ordinance now. Um, you get to a question of whether you're substantially modifying the, the ordinance to the point that you have to have another reading. As long as we're changing the numbers, and, and I just had a conversation with bond counsel. My opinion is, as long as you're changing the numbers and you're not affecting the questions, then you're not making substantial modifications, and this is fine. However, once you start talking about changing the categories. No, we're not doing that. No, no, that's been suggested twice. So now. I now remove that yeah. suggestion. Yeah, once you start talking about changing the categories, then I say that, that you're, you're going to have to start all over. Why don't we drop tech from um, 5 million to 2 million and move those, the remaining three, into affordable housing? So that's that at least right. now you're talking about $8 million for yes. affordable housing, which I still think is insufficient. Um, you, know, I you, you can take two from somewhere else. And well, things. I don't know. Does anybody else have somewhere in their pot of gold they're interested in throwing two million over to Half a million housing? Ben Franklin. <laughs> you better I'll, leave I'll, I'll, ben I'll Franklin give you a million. Now. Okay, here we go. We're negotiating now. As the councilwoman just suggests, I'll, I'll suggest we lower the Mocha stream okay. by a million and the City Hall stream by a million. That's move right. Those two, two million over yeah. to. To make it ten. To make it ten. Yeah. You understand? To make it ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> Affordable housing. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. All right, we got ten. Ten. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I wasn't here. Um, what I suggested. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get more for affordable housing because yeah. we had dropped it to five million. So what I suggested was moving three from tech to housing, bringing it now up to eight, and then taking a million from Mocha and a million from City Hall and moving it to housing, okay. bringing it up to ten. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two? Oh, okay. Tech, leaving tech at two. Okay. So can, before we do that, if you don't mind, um, can we decide what we're cutting out? Because we have police te technical equipment is at two. I'd like to have some in there um, and maybe take out the Wi-Fi. Whatever administration we, 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 feels. Don't do that? Don't, don't worry about don't it? Worry about yeah, you'll discuss it. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think we're ready, guys. Okay. okay. Yeah. We're not final. Based on that, it is infrastructure. Excuse me. Did you say this was all here? I'm sorry. Apologies. My mic's not on. Be it bottom line of 120. 77 uh, for uh, facilities improvements, 31. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody. It's Fat Tuesday. Yeah. I got some beer. I, I got crawfish boil wait. Um, 31 for infrastructure and sustainability. $2 million for tech. How much was And $10 million for affordable housing. How much do you have for um, infrastructure and sustainability? 31. 31. I thought we had 35. And it's 31. Okay. Does that include two million for guard gates? Yes. Yes, because we moved it out of our other. Okay. And. And paving. And it's two million for whatever. Uh, I count the 121. Spent. I count 121 on that. Oh, because you didn't take out for Nomi Center. You didn't make it 29. Is Nomi 29? Two. And Moka 15. Ten. No, read my numbers. 77. Mm -hmm. 31. Yeah. Two and ten. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Bad. Bad. Okay. Good. All right. Now, could we sh could we shape a little bit more off community centers? That's your decision. And move it to affordable <laughs> housing. <laughs> no, simple. just shave it off the bond. Can we take another ten, five or ten, and bring this down to one hundred and ten thousand? One hundred and ten million. That's what million. We, the thing is, though, if Wait we don't have. We just added, um, did, 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 did they add my entrance gate? Trying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, it's I there. It's you, there. You, you, we I just, we moved okay, Ben Franklin. Okay, Councilman, I, you, you stop. Let me remove the Ben Franklin. Did, All right. Yeah, can I, well, can I move us away from numbers for one second? Yes. On the question, then, just so I can be, it'll be clarified, uh, with regards to the infrastructure improvement question, 
I would ask that uh, the attorney add um, either gatehouse or security buildings into the question. I think we one word, two words will be okay. Can to we keep do, us within our seventy-five limit? Can we? Um, wait, wait, wait. He's asking you something. I don't know. She said yes. She, she said, said yes. yes. Okay. Can we? Can we modify that to um, entrance gates versus that's, security that's, gates? No, no, Jeff. That's important. Yeah. No, that's. But that was the question oh, okay. I just asked. Yes. Okay. That's it. Michael. Okay, so can you? I don't have that. So can you tell me what <laughs> she, she's changing there? From what word to what? No, yeah, because he has to read it. I'll put it on the record. Uh, well, no, I'll, I'll read it right now. Yeah. To you, in the infrastructure improvement question, referendum question, uh, the sentence currently reads: Shall the city of North Miami, Florida, issue bonds in one or more series, not exceeding the aggregate principal amount of now, but we we're about to change this. It now reads forty three million two hundred fifty thousand, bearing interest rates not exceeding the maximum legal rate, maturing within thirty years from issuance, pledging the city's ad valorem tax revenue to finance various sustainability and infrastructure projects, including sidewalks, streets, resurfacing, landscaping, lighting, green spaces, drainage and transit related improvements. What I would suggest the last portion of the sentence be, well, we'll change the notional amount to 31 million now. Mm -hmm. We can remove transit related, yeah. transit and add uh, with for behind green space uh, gatehouses. Yeah. I'm just you're scratching off one word and putting gatehouses. Uh, it's not going to be yeah. on that, so this is going to be. I'm putting on the record. We can't. I can't even hear. Okay. So. I, I was just telling the clerk he doesn't need to. It's not going to change the. It's not going to change the, the ordinance. The it's ordinance. It's not going to change yes. the ordinance. The manager yeah. just put it on the record, so it's been on the record. What you're going to when you take the vote, the it's going to be on the ordinance. It's going to be the ordinance question, not not what he just read. Yeah, on the ordinance. No, but the, if we're going to make amendments, we're going to have to read that with the amendments. It's, it's not. A, it's not an amendment to okay. the ordinance. It's an amendment to the question, which is part of the ordinance, which is now on the record what the change is. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be reading that. Okay. When you take the vote, you're not going to be reading that. Okay, so I'm just saying approve with amendments. No. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's All right. It. So that and, and the number changes. Okay. So with this, I guess be, before you even go, we, we need a motion. That's what I'm saying. So okay. Okay. We need a motion to approve. I'll, I mean to. Yeah. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the bond ordinance at the dollar amount. Overall of 120 million, with the breakdown as read previously by the city manager, 77 million for facilities, 31 million for infrastructure and sustainability, 2 million for tech, and 10 million for affordable housing. I second that. I have a motion made by Councilman Galvin to approve tab F with the amendments as stated on the record by Councilman Galvin. That motion was seconded by Mayor Smith Joseph. Roll call vote. Councilwoman Keys. Can, can we have any more discussions? Yeah. I mean, is that, is that the bottom, bottom line we can do with community centers? Do we have to have we a City attorney, meeting? we have a motion in a second. Are we, what do I do? Under discussion, certainly the maker of the motion yeah. is willing to have discussion before we have the vote. But Councilwoman, <laughs> we're whittling, we're whittling. I'm, Where else will you want us to whittle? Just, just in the community centers. As but a, but the, uh, my fear is we whittle community centers yeah, so much I can't build the new ones. I can't. I'm, I'm, we. I, we can't build the new one out at Solomia, which is the bigger oh. ticket of mm -hmm. that one. But, but, oh, did we put that in there? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. It's yeah. Not we moved those money to there. But <laughs> right. And we took Clue Pepper Park also. No, you did not take Clue Pepper Park. No, we didn't. Council, <laughs> Councilwoman, and, and what Councilman Gavin said. Can we, I, have a, can we have a description of exactly where we are with the community yes. centers? Yes, because before, you, before we do that, I, I was willing to take everything off, but Councilman said something. No, seriously. I was willing to take all community centers just have the city hall money. However, he said something that's important, which I didn't think about. If we do that, there's really nothing for the people. So when you're taking, 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 how are you asking them to pay 
What are they paying for? For the city all belongs to the people. Well, that that's your um, that's your opinion, but. <laughs> It I, I mean, so, but yeah, it, it is belong yeah. to us, but some people may not want to pay for it. So we got to get them something to buy, just like Mocha. Mocha okay. belonged to all so, of us, but so not everybody okay, willing to pay but, for it. But before we vote, can we have a breakdown of what we spoke of, of the community centers? Bottom line, we took a million here and there, added five to. <laughs> you don't want to, I mean, I'd just like to know what the final numbers are of those I just centers. No, you didn't right. tell me what the breakdown right. of the centers was. Do we not care? Uh, we, that's the thing. We got to leave ourselves a little flex because. Okay. Okay. I mean, we we still have time to specify all that out. No, no one's guaranteeing tonight that you're building anything for the amounts that you're saying right now because it. we don't know. Okay. All you're voting on is the categories There's and the, the, and the category. items that you're there. I, I, mean, just you know, may, I just know we took a million Two out years from now, you may have an item that comes up and we may not be able to do any of this stuff yeah, because didn't you didn't vote a large enough bond. So you're not going through this exercise of figuring out, we don't know. We okay. got some, we've got some numbers as best as we could, but you're not voting. No one's saying that it's going to cost $10 million to do this because okay, we don't so, know right now. So we have this these numbers, this comes Estimate. from the website. Is the website going to be adjusted tomorrow to reflect what we did tonight? Oh, yeah. The, yeah, if it changes, it yeah. has to. Oh, oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Okay. The categories. One last question, Mr. Mayor, as the maker of the motion. I know we've talked about having an oversight board. Mm -hmm. I'd like us to throw some language in wherever you feel it's appropriate that would prohibit separate. separate motion on what how she know what I was going to say the items the met, that the manager brought up we'll uh -huh. come back with a separate um, with a separate it, I don't know if it's going to be an ordinance or a resolution but we'll bring those items a up resolution tonight yeah. or at another meeting? no I'll bring it at, at, at the next meeting okay then let me ask let me just suggest this that we also include language that would prohibit this bond money at any time being used to pay the day-to-day -day expenses mm -hmm. of City Hall, you can't, including anyway. payroll and or expenses. Can't why, can't why, why can't you do that? Come on, come on. Hi, Jolinda Herring with the law firm of Bryant Miller Olive, um, serving as your bond counsel. Um, yes, you can make the motion, but for IRS tax purposes, you cannot legally use the money for that for those purposes. So I mean, you, you're welcome to make the motion to sp specify that. But what I'm saying to you, you cannot legally do that for tax purposes. Okay. So at a future meeting, when we're talking about an oversight board, mm -hmm. I cannot have language written in that says we will not use this money. And I know the feds. I know what the feds say. I'm sure you saw the newspaper article I did. about mm -hmm. our neighboring city who's I in did. some trouble for I doing did. this. Uh -huh. Right. I'm so trying I'm, to give the people more faith that we're not well, going to. So what, what I am saying, away. yes, you can, you can give that to your oversight board um, as guidance and guidelines. Okay. But what I am saying to you is that from a federal tax point. You legally cannot use the money for those purposes. Okay. So, so I whether you specify that or not, you can't do. right? I, I and I get you. Right. I'm just trying to. Okay. I, I'm 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 trying to. Yeah. Make sure fine. that you, a future council doesn't. Go I don't. Oh. I don't. I'm, and yes, I'm going to say something. Have, having probably been the only one in this room, well, I don't know about the audience, who has gone through an SEC investigation of, mm. of substantial form. You put that obligation on an advisory board fiduciary obligation to be in compliance with that you may not get an advisory board <laughs> so because because that obligation lies with the city and the the finance director the city manager and the professional staff um, to maintain that compliance with those bond companies um, I don't I would tell you right now if I was a citizen of North Miami and I wanted to be on that bond oversight board and you told me one of my obligations is to ensure the bond compliance with regards to that matter I would tell you thank you and and move <laughs> on right so I, I I'm, and I'm just warning because that'll be something that we would have passed put in the record and trust me the SEC will look at it right. okay <laughs> since we've now made it yeah. abundantly clear that mm -hmm. we're not going to cannot and we'll all just put our the little silver bracelets on if we do it None of this bond issue will be we're going to jail <laughs> 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 payroll mm -hmm. 
or any other things like that. Okay. All right. M Mr. Mayor, that, those are all my questions. For now. I know a lot of people are texting me now about sustainability to be continued. I'll, I'll share everybody with everybody the ULI report that we're basing some of this on. It's, it's, a it's meaty. All right. So Good just for the record, Mayor, we did have a motion made by Councilman Galvin. The motion was read on the record already with its amendments. The motion was then seconded by you mm -hmm. um, to approve tab F for the amendments as read on the record by Councilman Galvin. Now it's a roll call vote. Councilwoman Keys, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Zume? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. And Councilman Galvin? Yes. Item passes with a 5 0 vote. Thank you very much. I believe now we get to the point of uh, it is Citizen Forum. Citizen Forum is now open for tonight's meeting. Citizen Forum is now open. Former Mayor, if you want to be heard, please come to the mic. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, can you yeah. Citizen Forum. You know, Teddy Roosevelt open, had a, my time going or what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Teddy Roosevelt said it was the man in the arena who counts, not the critics. You know, you're going to get a lot of criticism, but you guys are the man in the arena. Uh, I just want to bring up and uh, hope the citizens remember Tommy O'Connell. He was a chief here in North Miami uh, back in the 80s. And he passed away a little bit after January. He was about 88 years old. He lived up in Coco, was chief up there for a while. The reason I bring up his name is he served this city for almost 30 years with dedication and, and love. And he had, Mr. Mayor, he had the vision that when nobody else would hire a Haitian-American, he hired the first Haitian-American officer, Andre Mesador, in Dade County. Mm -hmm. And he was a great man with a lot of compassion and a great sense of humor. And he was one of the, I would say, cornerstones of our modern today police department. He had a vision. And when people were saying, no, we don't need an undercover unit, he started one. When people were saying, no, you shouldn't do your own homicides, he started that. And he, he, he wanted to bring us into the 21st century and to the new millennium. And he, and he believed in equal rights. And, and he believed in the officers going out there and being professional and doing their level best. So I would hope tonight that the people that did know him in this city remember him with a kind thought. And for people that didn't know him, know about his legacy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, Mayor, the talk I'm going to give you takes about four and a half minutes, not two minutes. If it please yourself and the council, rather than switching places and other people speak for another minute or two. If you'll give me the four and a half minutes, I'll be as brief as I can. Four and a half? Why, yeah. why four and a half? Because I, I, I timed this out, and that's about how long it takes, as long as you let me go. Go ahead. I don't Thank, know. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, I'm Frank Woland, 12865 West Dixie Highway. I represent a group of the homeowners in the Parkview subdivision. Uh, this was, this is the area behind Spotmaster. It was residential, but it was zoned by you in July and August to become industrial. And you'll recall there was a buffer there between the industrial, there was a discussion which Council Galvin, Councilman Galvin made and others about a buffer between the industrial area, and the residential area. Vice Mayor Keyes purchased the two lots right behind Spotmaster in August. She received building permits to build a fence on December 5th, and this is on Northeast 12th Place, right across from the homes. And as of last Thursday, no construction had taken place. They started, they put up a, a string to build a wall. 
I called Vice Mayor Keyes. I asked her to stop so that we could discuss it. Um, she said she can't stop. And in the last three or four days, there have been five or six guys out there every day building this, this fence. On February 8th and before, CPND had circulated a memo with draft regulations to create a buffer between the residential area and to make it so that vehicles from the industrial area would not be driving through these homes. Because while it may be a landscape nursery now, it may turn into a brewery or something else. And I don't think any member who is here or anyone would want this driving down their residential neighborhood. So we're here tonight to, ask, to make the council aware, to ask Mrs. Keyes to stop the construction until the new land development regulations come before the planning board and before this council, before you have a public hearing. We also note that one of the building permits was issued without a survey and that there's a section of the code which requires that fences or walls in non-residential districts that are adjacent to residential properties or across the street must have a masonry wall. This is not a masonry wall. The folio numbers are different. The fence would, the permit, one permit was given without a survey, at least that's what it appears to me. And we think they may have been issued in error. We recognize you can't go back in time, and perhaps the better practice would have been to adopt land regulations to protect the residential area when you changed the zoning, instead of saying that you were gonna do that later. We're here to urge Vice Mayor Keyes to voluntarily agree that she will follow whatever regulations are passed for the residential neighborhood next to the property that she purchased literally on the eve of its rezoning. Um, we hope she will yeah. decide, I'm about done, Mayor, I got three lines. We hope she'll decide to be a good neighbor. We ask the council to direct the manager to take a look at the permits, see whether or not they are proper, and that if you do pass regulations, you provide that any subsequent site plan would conform to the buffer. Thank you. I've right. given you all the comments in a letter, and there is a aerial photograph, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just, uh, just one question, Mr. Attorney, for future reference. I know this is Citizen Forum. Citizen Forum is open for anyone to come and speak about any topic whatsoever. For two minutes, yes, sir. Huh? For two minutes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, but the but going forward, I mean, no, it's 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 okay. This is fine. This is fine now, because usually these when people have a complaint about any department or whatever it is, we would get the director of the appropriate the the, the department the, the, to the to address the I've issue. Been, the practice since I've been here is if there's been an issue that staff should be uh, dealing with, yeah. you normally would direct staff to deal with. Yes, issue. that would be fine, Mayor. Where's the director of CPN? That would be CPND? No, not CPND. Well, that be when when department a building permit is issued. Huh? City manager, don't bring a department head up yeah. here. We'll, we'll take care of it. We'll look into <laughs> it. Yes, okay. Thank you. Now I'm putting it on the record that we are, I'm directing staff to follow up with you on the issue. Thank you. We will meet with staff and we thank you for giving us your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank mm. you, Council. Citizen Forum is still open. Judy Brown, 1100 Northwest 128 Terrace. I would like to just give a um, shout out or recognition to my um, councilman and to the rest of, uh, and to the manager and deputy manager and council as well uh, for having the end, the, the vision and actually moving forward with hiring a crew to go around the city of North Miami and to start to uh, clean the city's swells. 
because we were becoming an urban blighted area. And I can say, truly say, that I have seen a difference in my neighborhood. And I was also, you know, I'm retired, so I'm always backwards and forth. <laughs> That's all I do. I was going over to LA Fitness and I saw them cleaning over by the school and all down 125th Street. It really, 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 really looks better. And I just want to thank you. Now, the only thing that we need to work on now, and it's the state, is the exits off 125th. And I know <laughs> Councilman Ben and me has been working on that. When you come off 125th, I-95 coming into our community and 135th, those areas are really, and that's the state, and someone needs to get on the state to get those uh, areas cleaned and cut. That grass needs to be clean and cut. But I can see a difference, and I'm just, I just wanted to, you know, sometimes we come up and we beat you, beat you guys up all the time. But this is one time I just wanted to come up and just give a shout out because it does look better. Even 125th, Central, and, uh, you know, the District 4 and all over. So we really need that for North Miami. Thank you. Um, yes, Mayor, Council. Uh, Mike McDear made 840 Northeast 127th Street. Uh, I'm just going to throw something out for your uh, consideration, Mayor uh, and Council, and that is that at a recent meeting at the Griffin Center, um, one of which was uh, one of the bond hearings, uh, several citizens spoke out in reference to items that really uh, come under the Charter Board. So um, if at some point consider um, bringing the Charter Board back so we could discuss some of these items that have been mentioned, mentioned by the constituents, uh, we'd appreciate your uh, consideration. Thanks. Uh, well, for, a, for Charter Board issues, uh, I, last time we had a Charter Review was a couple of years back. And five? Huh? Yeah, about five years ago. I think. So, how does it go? Does it? Does it? Does the board still exist, even if they're not functioning? Um, the old members. The the, the board guys. exists, hmm? but my it's been a while since I did the research. I know uh, Mr. McDermott had asked me before. My recollection, I don't have the the uh, code in front of me right I do now. Have to you have to you have to reconvene the board mm -hmm. to have them. Um, go ahead and review the charter. So if you all decide that's what you want to do, you just have to bring up a motion, reconvene the board. If there's this, if there's specific areas of the charter you want to have uh, have them to review, you can bring that up also. Well, uh, we have to do it by resolution or we can just... It's probably better to just do it by resolution. Okay. Um, if, that's, if that's the guidance we have, then we can have something prepared for the next meeting or you know, with subsequent meetings. Okay. Mr. Mayor, quick question. And you, we could add new members or we have to use the existing members? Mm -hmm. You can add new members. Oh, okay. Yeah, we don't put, believe the board, the, is the board... There's only two members right oh, now. Oh, yeah, there's so no members. Have to okay. the board and, and put on new members. Got it. We'll come up. We'll come back with it. So, Richard and East 13030 Northeast 10th Avenue. Um, going forward, when you start to look at some of the code that needs to be adjusted and fixed, um, about five years ago, you put in an ordinance for people to, to have to have a driveway and not park on the grass inside the sidewalk. We have a huge problem with people parking all over their grass. And in the same sense, you're asking the residents to maintain the swale, and you're telling me I can't stop anyone from parking on my swale, parking on my paved, uh, parking in front of my house, not my driveway, but if I have a paved area in front of my house, I can't stop anybody from parking there. In the same sense, you're also saying in the code that every uh, residence can only have two cars on the swale. So I can't stop anybody from parking there. So when there's five cars on my swale, you, you don't know which two cars I'm, are visiting me properly, or even if I know the people that are there. So you're gonna uh, find the, the homeowner and not the, not the cars because you can't possibly fi find the cars individually because two of them are legal and three of them aren't. Which two are you gonna pick out? 
So you really, really need to address that problem in, in the code. Uh, it's, it's absurd. I, I, like I said, I can't stop someone from parking on my swale, and I, and I can't limit how many cars are there, but I can be fined if there's more than two. So something that has to be addressed. Thank you. Good evening, Kevin Burns, 2065 Alamanda Drive. Um, just want you to know that if uh, um, I've been getting questions, I want you to know that the Miami Way Theater is in the process of changing hands um, and some items will be coming back uh, in front of this uh, administration. I want to, I can't say what's going on, but people have been wanting to know why there was dumpsters and so forth out there. Um, but I think it's something that you all will uh, uh, like and see something new on uh, West Dixie Highway. Um, I have to say that so far working with the uh, administration gathering information has been very, very helpful and um, we're looking forward to uh, having something new and lively over there uh, for our city. On, on a second item, um, I think it was a little unfair that an attorney got up in front of the city council to discuss an item that nobody has a chance to rebut. Um, that particular property in that area has actually been zoned industrial since I was mayor. That's when it was changed to industrial. All you all did this past uh, session with the LDRs is just make the two conflicting zoning and the underlying zoning, which was industrial, and uh, the the other top part uh, to conform and, and make it legally what it is. Um, I think it's very, very dangerous um, and have to be very cautious when you allow individuals to come up and um, impede the administration, impede the, the council people, and not saying they did anything legally wrong. They just did something that they didn't particularly like. And I think it's a, a very cautious tale. And, I, and I'm always giving the uh, residents the power to come and speak to the council. But it's something that's, Mr. Mayor, that you have to be very, very careful about um, when it starts attacking um, somebody uh, or trying to shame somebody um, personally into something, even though they were legally within the rights of the city and the administration was legally within in the rights. Okay. There's other ways to do it. Thank you very right. much. Good evening, Karen DeLeon, 1935, South Hibiscus. I wasn't going to speak to this because I'm not fully prepared, but you were talking about the Charter Review Board. Mm -hmm. I sit on the Parks Board, and we really need you guys to be appointing people which takes us to the next step, which is that we lost part of our board because they didn't know they needed to be reinstated. So apparently the clerk needs to go through the paperwork. They're, they need to, we didn't know. There are many people on the parks board that are no longer on the board that now need to get reinstated. Their paperwork needs to be done and then you all will need to reappoint them. But we still have openings. And one of my own homework assignments, but I haven't had the time is to, to review or ask, how many boards have openings? Um, how do the public know? I'm a homeowners association president. I never get any type of notice of, hey, we have these boards and they have openings. And I think that would be a great resource to utilize your HOA presidents to distribute the information that these openings exist, what the roles of those uh, boards are, what needs to be done. And then I would like to ask that we return to the days as long as I've been on parks once every certain amount of years, I get in the mail the packet that I need to fill out so that I can get reinstated as a parks commissioner. If we could return to those days, I think it would help us. We couldn't have a, a meeting last month because suddenly we found out that we were, I'm going to use the incorrect wording, out of compliance. Thank you. Hmm? In the report. William Prevotel, 11950 North Bay Shore Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor and, and Council, I'm sure you're as troubled as, as I am and as many of the people in our city um, of, of sort of an attitude that's been pervasive through the country these days. And I know that our City Council has issued a press release uh, based on some comments some weeks ago. But I'd really like it if, if there was some way that our City Council could show a little bit more of a 
uh, a little bit more of an energy in uh, repelling uh, such concerns that we might have in our very diverse community. And I was wondering, uh, and this, this comes from someone who's, who uh, lived much of the post-World War II era and, and cannot really believe that we've come to this point once again, something that, uh, uh, things that we overcame what we thought maybe decades ago. But I'd, I'd like it if our city council might in some way be able to have a resolution uh, despite having uh, legislation in place, but a resolution saying that if you are racist or have racist views or racist initiatives, or if you're sexist or homophobic or xenophobic and fear people from other countries, uh, that you are not welcome in the city of North Miami. <laughs> I realize that physically we cannot stop anybody from coming into the city of North Miami. But wouldn't it be nice if we took a stance and let that be known to other communities, possibly if you share it with other mayors and such. I don't know if other communities have done this, but maybe we should start. Because um, if we don't speak up now, uh, if anybody knows history, those who don't speak up sometimes wind up suffering the, uh, the consequences down the road. And I, I'd like it if you would consider uh, such a gesture. And it is just a gesture, but it might mean something to some people in our community. Thank you. All right, citizen forum still open. Good afternoon. Um, Alina Medina, 1270 Northeast, 124th Street. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to have a gentleman spoke uh, about our neighborhood with the uh, fence that we were being affected by in our area. And I wanted two minutes to make up for it and said that uh, we have worked very hard to keep the area safe and quiet, and that is the purpose of it. We want to keep it that way. This is being, it's being uh, the fence being built there now is not conforming to the current, uh, you know, zoning of, of the property. So I just want to say thank you, and have a good night. All right. Okay, Citizen Forum is now closed. I believe we're down to reports from anyone who may have one. Um, yeah, I would like to recognize our attorney, Mr. Cazzo, um, because Mr. Cazzo is taking the initiative for the clean city. He is working with our departments. He is working with all the departments to make sure our code and our city is kept clean. So, Judy Brown, thank you for recognizing it. And I think we can... He's, he's, Wait a he's minute. working, he, he's identified he properties, talk, the cleaning. and <laughs> oh. he, I don't think he has to do that. That's not in his uh, legal <laughs> duties, but yeah, but, you, you wait, wait. <laughs> but, but I want to recognize our attorney because I, I think we're going to see great strides in keeping, uh, making our city a lot cleaner and codes that. being enforced. So thank you, Mr. Right. Attorney. Uh, and I'll uh, compliment the city attorney for the uh, legislative report um, of the ongoing lawsuits that we're in the middle of. That was a very helpful, easy read. So thank you for taking the time to put that together. I actually like the format. Um, but so Councilwoman, of the, of the report that the, the city attorney provided us with the lit litigation list that we have. Councilwoman, just to be clear on the record, I know Judy Brown, you, you stated but thank you, and it was our idea, Arthur, and, and you, Ms. Judy Brown, against the Chinatown. We got that from China. They <laughs> were cleaning the street, and I looked over at Russia, and Councilwoman, you were there. Everywhere we go, they were cleaning residents, cleaning the streets, and it was it was so clean. And Tanya, you know, and thank you, Mr. Manager um, and, and Deputy for, for doing that, because the city, I, I'm getting calls all the time from residents, really, really happy from Keystone all the way over to the west side. Um, just a few announcements, music, um, an evening of honor I, as we close out our Black History um, Month festivities in the city of North Miami will be held at the Joe Celestine Center on Friday, February 23rd. I mean, you could go in the city, Eventbrite, to register in our signature music in the plaza event, which was mentioned earlier by our PRO, will be held Saturday the 24th, um, featuring Chubb Rock, um, Karen White, Evelyn Champagne King, and of course, um, Drew Hill. Um, Mr. Manager, I just, ends with me, oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Manager, I have, Quick question for you, in, in, in reference to Sweet Mickey, are we having the, the, this carnival this year? Because I've been getting some calls and emails, um, and we need to know either yay or nay on what's going on I, with that. I have officially postponed it 
um, but I've been okay. But um, for a future date, okay. Uh, but I'll be in touch. You'll be in touch. Okay. Yeah. Next question. If I can, I mean, but I should be. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Carnival, I mean, traditionally, carnivals cannot take place after Lent. Oh. When is Today Lent? is Mardi Gras. Uh, it's Lent supposed to be the last day exactly, so of the, carnival, the carnival. My, my Mardi anywhere. Mardi Gras party is waiting for me. Huh? My Mardi Gras party. <laughs> yeah, <waiting> anywhere <laughs> in the world. So, uh, so the day, the time for the carnival to happen has passed. Oh, okay. At least for this year. For this year, got it. Well, yeah. we just need to make sure and be clear and and, and you know reach out to the phone. Mm. Um, the other question, um, no, that that it has passed. Whatever they, he changed the date, Mister um, Mister Manager. I'm gonna um, ignore my colleague here. Code <laughs> enforcement. Um, did we hire a director? And what's going on? In because every out of five complaints I get. Three are from code enforcement for my area. So, do we first of all um, do we have an officer assigned there? Yes, you do. And who is it? Um, I'd have to. Check. Okay, tomorrow. Well, let me know. All the time, no? Okay, let me know. Well, they, there is yeah, a rotation, but, but if I can address your question, yes, we are hiring a director. We've been doing a recruitment. In addition to that, I just hired three new officers this week because we were down four officers. Okay. So. I actually, and I spoke to a couple of your constituents directly about the level of that person um, last Thursday. So we are diligently working on your area. Awesome. Last question. Police Chief, when are you making your final decision? Um, I have gone through the interviews. Um, I'm, I'm waiting on uh, one, one more meeting, but I probably will be announcing something in the next couple of weeks. So well, do, uh, can we do it before next meeting? Because... I went on two no. radio interviews. Let, let me say this, Mr. Manager. This was two weeks ago. And they asked me, and I told them I had met with you. You told me it would be a couple of weeks from then. Um, when, when do we meet? Well, before March. I, I think I'll be okay because I don't want to go back to, 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 we're a big city. And I don't know why since, it's taking a little bit too long. So if it's before March, I think I could kind of squeeze it and, and let the folks know to kind of, Hold off. Something is, um, Mr. Attorney. You saying something? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't. I would just caution you. Yes. Because the charter is very clear on mm -hmm. making directions to the manager on when or whom to hire. Okay. So but you, I, I'm, you, you haven't said anything wrong. Okay, but I'm, uh, no, no, I'm just, I know. I'm just, I'm just telling you, just. I no. You can't direct them I, by a certain. Listen, Mr. Mr. Attorney, I respectfully, you could ask the manager. I have not even, when we meet weekly, that, that that's not even a subject that I even bring up. So the only reason I'm bringing it up tonight is because I've been on two radio interviews. The community folks are asking me. I, as the messenger, I'm just asking him. I'm not directing him. I'm not giving him any dates or anything. I said the faster, the the the, the sooner, the better, because he didn't okay. mention for me. That's basically that. Thank you. Yes. Councilman, do you have any? No. reports, Mr. Mayor. Nothing? No. Uh, we, uh, I'm sorry, guys. I just want to warn him that we will move Ben Franklin money to. No, I'm just, uh, no, the only, the only point I want to make, of course, you know, council cannot, well, should not, cannot legally get engaged in anything that has to do with employment and, and so forth. But we, as policy makers, if there is a position that has been vacant, no, wait, wait, hold, on, hold on one second. Absolutely. There is a reasonable time that this position should be filled. I'm not, I'm not asking you to, uh, to respond. I'm, t I'm simply making, no, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm, talking, I'm saying that for the general public too. As, you know, as policy makers, it, it, uh, it is expected of us to have certain behavior and to do certain things. By the same token, we who hire a city manager or a city attorney, I mean, there are certain expectations that, that we have. And it's okay for us to express it publicly. Yes, and in fact, we do need a police chief ASAP, ASAP. Yes. okay? We do need one. How long has, has um, Chief Over Drew? A year? Huh? Two years? A year. Almost. It's, it's too no. Since it's last too long. Year in, it's, it's, it's way, it's way, way to too long. We need a permanent police, you know, you know, chief. No, 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 no. That's the only thing that I want to say about that. 
the, the my point that I really want to make is because is about I, I don't know how long ago it was is since uh, Joe Celestine was actually kicked out of that contract at Biscayne Landing. And uh, I don't remember whether we did, someone was hired or if the position is still open. I'm not, I'm kind of fuzzy about that. And oh, wow. we're supposed to have someone that represents us at Biscayne Landing, I mean, to, to tell, give us periodic reports about what the folks are doing at Solemia. And if someone was hired, I don't know, because I, we, we haven't seen any, I haven't seen any reports. Mr. Can I say something about that? No. And uh, I think since uh, no. Joe Celeste and uh, the, that contract been canceled, and we talked about bringing another third party on site, but at the same time we were having discussion on do it in house. But right now, since we start seeing Solemia, and it seems like it's real. And we're not having it is real. It, it's real, then and we're not having enough information, or then compliance with everything, or they are doing what they're supposed to do based on the contract, and are they in violation with any state or derm or anything? I think right now it's time if yeah, we have really I mean, bring a new RFP out to hire a firm, a company. Uh, to oversee Solemia, uh, the maintenance contract that uh, stipulate in the in the agreement, uh, I think uh, it's time to do that because we we are receiving update from the local preference, but it seems like that is the same same Well, same I, well actually, same there are some grievances about the LPO office. That's when it's too. The LP, two, that's another in the elephant. That's two areas I think we need to mm -hmm. address. The mm -hmm. LPO and the maintenance company mm -hmm. to oversee what's going on on the site. I think uh, you need to reconsider those two issues and if you're going to bring them on the table and discuss that with them. That the LPO, good. because they had a, health, um, a job fair. Nobody yeah. in the community knew about it. And I don't think there are two people from that affair, job fair. When you finish, so I can respond. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the the RFP that you're referring to was completed, uh, it, and we've we've held it in the interim. The public work staff has been the staff on site, dealing with the uh, engineering side of the compliance. On the compliance with regards to the general compliance with the lease and the development obligations. We have a staff that works in the city attorney's office that make, ensures that they're doing, uh, either are or not doing all the things they're supposed to do. I do need to give you guys a status report because we have had some issues, but we have been, I have personally been meeting with the developer and, just, and their team dr addressing those issues. But, but in regards to payments and I all that stuff they've I been giving I understand they have been that compliance. part but remember yep. in the contract it mm -hmm. says that a third party like uh, representing the city you're talking about staff since you hire that person whenever they will report are they doing what they're supposed to do or not that is over a year well I've been getting the reports you've been giving the report but, but that's why don't. I said I need to give you a report that's what I just said yeah but I think what's uh, the important aspect of it is to have a third party overseeing everything the way it is in the contract and on the engineer on the engineering side yes absolutely yeah to make sure they're in compliance then right now we can know what's going on or they are in, I'm going to give you a simple example the fear that they were supposed to remove we don't have a report right now to tell us it been 100 percent remove is not or what was the final decision? That's when it's a lot of things. Uh, go. I'm not calling any lobbies. Uh, please, please, please. We're talking about things in the contract, and he cannot answer that. We're talking I'm about the contract, and in the contract, there is a maintenance <coughs> agreement that a third party should be on site and give us reports 
on a daily operation or every week or every two weeks or every month on what's going on on the site. And now since it's a big, big site, and I don't want to just leave it in the hand of an employee or just public works department to come and tell us exactly we'll take what every, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take take everybody to, next meeting. Need to I brought up the point because it's I had It's extremely some important. It's not like <laughs> we're saying that they're doing something wrong, but we need to know exactly what's going on on a weekly or monthly or bi-weekly basis. And so the qualification of that person who's overseeing I mean, who's I mean, who's overseeing that? What are those, those the qualifications, and what is the scope of that job? I mean, what is what is the scope of it? So I'd have to. What, give, I'd, I'd, it's not something I can go into a deep dive on right because, now. Uh, because because I that. I uh, I know that they've already done ground. Well, not only done, not just ground ground breaking. They've built the main artery, and I I did a visit there a couple of weeks back. And I think they started, well, no, not think. I mean, they've already er erected about four or five st stories. No, they're almost at 10, 11. Well, right now. Okay. So, I mean, all these things is being done. I mean, this is a humongous, you know, project. And we are sitting here, and I don't know if anybody else have any more, any more information, but I don't. The, info, the only information that I got was when I did the site visit. I will give and you that's why I came up when I, you know, was with Tillman, and and the the uh, I I had that discussion, we had the, we had that discussion, and uh, that's why I brought it up, and I wanted to know what is going on, and the LPO, of course, you and I talked about the LPO, or the and the, and the issues of of LPO, so we need to be serious about. Yeah. I mean, these are things that are stipulated in our in our contract. And I mean, if, if that contract needs to be pulled back and come here and start going over it again, that may be what we have to do. Sounds like you got a briefing from me. So, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, no, I mean, that's what we've been. Because no, I that, mean, well, you know, Mr. Prevotel, you know, speaks about it every almost every day. But I don't want to go to that level. But but the fact is. If we do not address these issues, we're doing a disservice to the people, to the taxpaying people in this community. I will make sure you This is all a 183 acres that was pretty much, you know, I don't want to use the I'll make what, sure you what was the word? Oh, no, I don't okay. Know. So, <laughs> so, so, but if there are a few little away. things no. No. that should be addressed, no, 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 we're not giving away. Mm. Mm. If it but was given away, then let's cut District Four out of the CRA. You get yeah. no CRA. <laughs> <you can't. laughs> no, we did. We did but not. As matter of fact, the last mm. we have it Solemia because of the last agreement that then people now start counting on that money in order to uh, even for the bond we're thinking by with the development of Solemia, we're going to reduce the amount of money that every residents are paying. But what, what we are discussing now is most likely we need to be aware of what's going on. And I don't think I've chosen just an engineer or it's not like I'm having issue with Whistler or Public Works. I will prefer the third party in the agreement that say we need someone to oversee. That's 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 what I see. And the LPO, like I said, they are the job fair. I don't think the community know about it, and I don't think they are five people. That's means it's a complete failure. Okay. That's need to be addressed. Mr. Clegg, did you have a report? Yes. Um, about the, uh, you told me to address it during the report. So regarding the boards, I've been flooded with conversations regarding the board. The mayor will make an appointment, but again, this should have been on the agenda, but I'm going to do it during my report. Let me make it clear to the public. The city clerk office has no jurisdiction over the board. We can't tell the liaisons what to do. We don't hold their minutes. We, have, we don't take records. We simply have no power, no jurisdictions over the board. The office of the manager does. The ordinance only mentioned in Chapter 2, Article 3, regarding boards, committee, and commissions, the city clerk's department is offered only one time in that chapter. And that's regarding the community relations board. And there's certain rules and stuff. If they propose certain rules and they want to leave a copy at the clerk's office, they can file a copy at the clerk's office so that when the public's available and they want to come by and read it over, they can. What I do up here in reading their appointments, I'm just doing that as a courtesy to the mayor and council where they tell me what appointments they want read and I read it to you. However, um, 
the board liaisons are the individuals. If you have any questions regarding the board, because I was told, Mr. Manager, online what's on there, it's not updated. And there's individuals who are alternates, and they weren't alternate. I had to clear it up with the mayor. I had to clear it up with other council members. We got in the Board of Adjustments and Planning Commission. There were some mistakes there. And what the liaisons are basically going to be directed by the manager to do is go through all our minutes and accurately list who's a member and who's an alternate on these particular boards. But just to let you know, when we get phone calls and we're told to call this liaison because that liaison didn't do X, Y, and Z, I don't have the authority to do that. When you call and ask me to um, reprimand this person because this person interrupted X, Y, and Z during a meeting, I do not have the authority to do that. We have no control over the board. Again, the manager is going to have probably a more specified conversation with his board liaisons to let them know what their responsibilities are. And Mike McDermott and K Kenny Each, they made it clear that even regarding the Board of Adjustment and Personnel Board, and I confirmed that, they're right when they say if it's two unexcused absences in one year, it automatically forfeits their membership. But I don't have the authority to tell people not to show up because they, I don't have that, that juris, I, that's not my jurisdiction, I don't have that authority. So regarding the board, if you have any questions regarding the board, please contact the office of the manager and he's going to direct you to the particular liaisons and then they'll solve whatever needs to be solved. With that being said, out of a courtesy to the mayor, the mayor would like to make an appointment of Peggy Bull, Boulet, right? right? Mm -hmm. And the appointment is to the planning commission as an alternate. Do I have a motion to approve Mayor Smith Joseph's motion to appoint Peggy Boulet as an alternate, as an alternate mm -hmm. to the planning commission? Do I have a motion? Second. I mean, do I have? So, May, are you so, making your motion? So move. Hmm? So oh, move. Okay, so I have a motion made by Councilman Bienname to appoint Peggy Boulet as an alternate to the Planning Commission. The motion was then seconded by Councilman Galvin. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item passes with a 5 0 vote. Thank you. That concludes my report. Uh, quick question, Mr. Manager. Can we, and this is something that I've been mentioning for years, we got to look at the structure of these boards and, and, and consider how other cities does it where either us on the council serve as have different committees where the mayor are signing because it's not working and, and it hasn't been working for years so either we look at um I, Doral does it like that in, in other cities that that does it where perhaps they get the, the citizens are on there but they also have um council folks responsible for you know however i know the intent but it hasn't been working for years and way before when i was clerk way before then michael was on here thank you Attorney. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, just really quick, because I know it's late. Uh, I did provide you with a memo uh, which uh, just highlights some of the uh, litigation issues we've had and some of the uh, successes in detailing uh, where we are in some of the litigations. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, in regards to what Councilwoman Keyes um, stated, we did, um, actually, I, I don't know if he left, but I personally got tired of hearing Kenny each come up here every meeting and say the city's not clean, the city's not clean. Um, so we've stood up what we call, we're, we're calling the Clean City Task Force. We've had two meetings. Um, basically what we're looking at is a comprehensive, um, it's, a, it's a comprehensive look at how the city's dealing with all sorts of issues from, you know, litter to uh, derelict homes to shopping carts and over the next couple of months you'll be getting some recommendations um, from the committee we're not really ready to stand up and, and let you know everything that we're doing but you will be starting to see some um, some suggestions from the committee in terms of resolutions and ordinances changing things so that we can uh, make the city a cleaner better community thank you wait mr. attorney I didn't I, I just heard about it tonight who's on the committee it's not a committee. It's, it's an internal. It's an internal oh, staff okay. committee. Oh, okay. Staff. Okay. Just looking at recommendations to make got it, to you got all. It. And when we're ready got to it, do got that, thank we'll, you. we'll let you know. No report. I want to say that uh, Laura Hill said if the bond got passed to 120 million, she'd champion everything. So. Laura Hill's got to be our base supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Move to adjourn. All right, meetings adjourned. Thank you very much. See you guys back in two weeks.